the stare, the look, the game. But look behind that steely facade, and Kyle Stanley's story is even more intriguing. It's been a dream of mine to be on tour ever since I was little. It doesn't matter how much talent you have if you don't combine it with a, with a good work ethic. I've always been a pretty driven guy. Once I put my mind on something, I don't stray much and work towards it. There is an unwavering focus that defines Stanley. But it's that singular focus that has guided him through his rise to the PGA Tour and proved essential while he learned to play on the game's biggest stage. I didn't do much in college. I pretty much went to school and practiced my golf game. That's when I really started dedicating myself to my game and, and I knew that you know playing golf for a living was, was what I wanted to do. Traveling across the country from his home just outside of Seattle to Clemson, South Carolina was the first step in chasing his dream. A two-time All-American and the ACC Player of the Year as a freshman in 2006, he set 18 individual freshman records at Clemson. In 2009, as a junior, he won the prestigious Ben Hogan Award as the nation's top male collegiate golfer. One of the things that really drew me to the program was guys that have gone there, they have really good representation on tour. So guys that were going there, they were getting better. That was the big thing for me. At the end of the day, it was kind of a business decision for me. I just thought that, that Clemson was going to be the best place for me to prepare myself to get out here. After turning pro at the end of 2009, he played a year on the Nationwide Tour, but didn't earn enough to get his PGA Tour card. Later in the season, he finished ninth at the PGA Tour Qualifying School. And then the steely resolve that had been driving him finally paid the ultimate dividend, a spot on the PGA Tour. Mentally, it was probably the toughest week I've gone through, especially on that back nine, because you're 30 minutes away from getting to a place where you've wanted to be your whole life. I think it was the second time I've heard my dad cry. The first was when he dropped me off for college, and. And the second was when I made that phone call. But um, it, was, it was neat. Um, I think, um, you know, for me, that was, you know, one of the biggest things I could do for them was, I'm going to stop crying. <laughs> Sorry. A lot of emotions. It was great to give that back to my parents. They've done a lot for me. It was a proud moment for all of us.